Hi everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. So in the last lesson, um, we talked a bit about like the basics of transcriptomics and talked about some like overall goals for uh, this, this series I'm doing. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys where to find um, publicly available transcriptomic data sets. And uh, we're gonna talk about this, this website where you can find them uh, publicly available. And then um, we're gonna download the data set that we'll be using for the rest of this, uh, this series. Uh, okay, so this is the website here. I mean, this, this is one of um, a couple different web websites, but this is this is the one I probably use the most. It's called um, the Gene Expression Omnibus, uh, or GEO for short, and um, it's it's run by the NIH, so it's a, a government website, and this is um, this is the web address up here. But you can also find it just by googling um, Gene Expression Omnibus. Um, yeah, so this is kind of what the start page looks like, and um, the cool thing about this website is that it's like, it's basically like a public repository um, for gene expression data sets, so it has a lot of um, RNA-seq data sets on here, um, some other experiments too, like microarray and like, and like chip seq and stuff. But yeah, a lot of good um, gene expression data sets. And kind of the way it works is that when um, experimental labs uh, do these gene expression experiments, um, when they eventually like publish the results, a lot of the times, um, in addition to publishing a paper, they'll make their data uh, publicly available on here for other researchers to download and use. And the cool thing too is that you don't need any kind of account or anything. You don't need any kind of like special credential or you don't even need any like university affiliation. Anyone who wants to can just go on this website and um, download these data sets to work with. So it's really cool. And that's the cool thing about our kind of work as um, bioinformatics people is that we don't really need any like super fancy equipment to do the kind of um, the kind of analysis we're doing we all we need is like a laptop and then we can go find these uh these great like publicly available um data sets and just download them for free and start uh start working with them um okay so i'll just show you guys like for example how how you would uh search for one so th this is actually like it's showing a bit of my like search history here um this this one is kind of funny here I, this was actually one i was searching like for real for my actual job but yeah, just for an example, I'll show you guys what happens if we search for Alzheimer's um, RNA-seq data sets. Um, yeah, it gives us a couple options here. So we can uh, just click this here and should um, should search. So yeah, basically every entry here is um, some, some data set. Some of them have a couple data sets too. Um, basically some entry of data sets that an experimental lab has posted with the results of some um, gene expression experiment. So yeah, like here, here's one single cell RNA-seq um, related to Alzheimer's um, in mice, uh, for example. Um, this one's in humans. Um, yeah, another Alzheimer's related experiment. Another RNA-seq uh, in mice. And yeah, a lot of options here. So um, yeah, a lot of options. So if you're trying to research like gene expression in Alzheimer's, you could possibly begin by um, going and looking through um, these data sets and reading reading like the descriptions of them, reading all the info and trying to find a good one to work with. Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys the one that we're gonna be using for the rest of this series um, to practice some analysis with. Uh, okay, so this is a data set that, um, that I, I picked out. Actually, the reason I picked it was because for my actual job, I had to give, um, I had to give like a journal club presentation and the article that I was presenting about was, um, related to this data set. It was actually another, it, it wasn't this, it wasn't this paper. It was another paper that referenced this data set and, and used it for some, uh, bioinformatics work. But yeah, that's how I came across this data set. And I, I thought it was a, a good data set. Um, to practice with because it's pretty straightforward and um, they formatted their data in a nice way that makes it easy to work with. Uh, but yes, let's start taking a look. So um, this is kind of the basics of it. It's RNA sequencing um, of uh, basically lung tissue and it compares some healthy lung tissue with, um, with two different kinds of lung diseases. So the first is called chronic hypersensitivity uh, pneumonitis, although we're actually going to be ignoring that one. Um, we're going to be focusing on the other disease here, which is called um, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. 
Um, so basically, even though that sounds like kind of fancy, all that really is is just a disease um, of of scarring of lung tissue. And this word idiopathic here just means that the cause of it is unknown. So idiopathic, meaning unknown cause, pulmonary, meaning related to the lung, and fibrosis, meaning scarring. It's just some kind of uh, disease involving scarred lung tissue with an unknown cause. And yeah, this is a human data set dealing with um, human lung samples, um, RNA sequencing. Um, you can read a little description of it here. It's got, um, for, for the control, healthy controls, 103 samples. Um, and then IPF, this is the disease we're working with, also 103. And then it has this other disease too that we're going to be um, eventually filtering out and ignoring. Um, and yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So a cool thing also about this um, GEO website is that when you're looking at the entry for a data set, it'll also show you um, the relevant paper related to the data set. So this is the, this is the paper that this um, experimental lab published about this um, experiment they did. So we can just click the, the PubMed ID here too to be able to, to read about the paper. So yeah, if you, if you guys wanted to like read... Um, read more about this and and this experiment they were doing um and get some like background about um about this disease and like the the lung health and stuff you could you could read uh this paper and you can get the, the full paper for free um with this link here so I, i'd recommend when you're doing your own projects this is a good way to get up to speed um on the data set that you're doing um so yeah we're not gonna read the whole thing here but but yeah when you're doing your own projects i recommend that as a good way to uh to get some background on the data set you're working with. Uh, but okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be downloading this um, this gene level count file down here. So sometimes you get a lot of different um, a lot of different information you can download, but for for the techniques I'm going to be showing you guys in um, in the rest of the series, what we really want to work with is um, a raw counts matrix. So we want like we want a gene level uh, count matrix that hasn't really been like normalized yet or anything. So we want we want a matrix that shows us all the samples and all the genes and then how many counts of mRNA were found for each gene in each sample. Um, but yeah, there's other information you can get too. This, these these other files will just have like other kinds of information. Um, yeah. So what we're gonna do for now is just is just click this little button here to download this file. And it's gonna give us um, a CSV download. Now, um, it's gonna come, uh, it's gonna come compressed in like one of these, one of these um, zipped files. Now, for some reason, my computer is being a little bit weird. So it's actually gonna give me an error when I try to unzip it. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you guys don't get the same error. But if you do, I'm gonna show you how to get around this error too. Yeah, you know what? It's taking too long. I think that's because I'm doing the screen recording. Um, it's taking too long, so it's not even getting to the error part. But um, I think if I wasn't screen recording right now, it would be giving me um, an error saying, like, error, this this file can't be unzipped properly or something. So if you guys um, are, are seeing the same error, like you can't unzip this um, this compressed file, um, the, way, the way to get around it uh, that I've found at least works on my computer is like this. So we're gonna to go to um, the downloads on the on the terminal command line. Um, we're gonna to check to make sure we got this uh, we got this zipped file here. And then we're gonna say g unzip and then the name of this um, zipped zipped uh, file here. And yeah that does the trick. So I don't know why my computer is being weird like that but yeah for me at least that does the trick. And now we can take a look um, at this file. Um, okay, so this is this is one of the reasons why I liked um, this data set to work with is that it's it, it comes uh, nice and easy for us. Sometimes you don't see them in this nice of a format. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of um, a little bit of like reformatting of some Excel file or something to get it to a good format to work with. But with this data set, they they give it to us nice and easy. So um, it basically it basically already looks how we're going to want it to look to read into our um, eventual R program. So it's basically like if you guys remember in the last lesson, um, the example matrix I was showing you guys uh, I was showing you guys in the last lesson. 
it basically looks like that, where we have um, we have a row for every gene. These are all the names of the genes uh, that we have measurements for. And then we have a column um, for every sample. And then the samples are labeled according to what kind of sample they are. So these are um, all the CHP samples. Remember, that was one of the uh, lung diseases. Um, and then if we go a little bit further down, we have um, the IPF samples. Remember, the IPF ones are the ones we're actually going to be um, we're actually going to be working with. That's the uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Um, this disease we're going to be uh, we're going to be taking a look at. Um, and then we have the control samples. These are the healthy lung samples that basically serve as a point of comparison so that we can see what what different is going on in the disease samples. But yeah, so it's it's pretty straightforward in terms of uh, in terms of the layout of this data set. As you can see, um, we have a lot of genes, um, probably about um, twenty thousand or so. Um, so, so yeah, we have a pretty big data set to work with. Um, but yeah, in the following videos, I'm going to be showing you guys how to um, how how to work with this data in R and eventually. Um, use some bioinformatics uh, techniques to eventually figure out some actually useful insights about, uh, about this disease um, and its effect on gene expression using this data set. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys for today. So if anyone has any questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll uh, see you guys next time.